Luna Lake could possibly be the first step of Intel's comeback. I think Intel has potential to be the best investment over the upcoming decade, especially in the semiconductor space. Now I know this sounds very stupid because a lot of people on YouTube are discussing that Intel is not a good investment. I, for the longest of times, have been uh, not investing in Intel, especially starting from 2016 and onwards, where I could see the threat from AMD. And I've been an extreme bull on AMD over the past eight years. But I think, you know, the situation starts to change, at least for Intel now. Um, I'm not 100% sure. I'm not saying that you should go with your life investment in Intel. But what I'm saying, like, you know, you look at this that line, for example. You can see that Intel faces the listing from uh, Dow Jones Index because the company has been performing really bad. I think they are down 54% year to date. Also, if you look at the Intel stock price over five years, it's down 60%. You look at the stock price over, you know, if you go from essentially dot com bubble after the lows of dot com bubble, they haven't moved anywhere. And if you bought stock, you know, in 25, 2005, 10, 15 or whatever time, you've lost a lot of money and left a lot of money on the table if you would have invested in other companies. So again, I haven't been, you know, Intel bull over this space because I started investing roughly around 2016. So less than 10 years ago. But I haven't at all been a bullish on Intel over this space. But um, it was essentially in 2022 where I started to kind of see potential for turnaround for intel because that's the case you find the best opportunities when the when the company is in a dire spot i don't for one second believe that intel will go out of business because i think the american state will back this company they need a company that needs manufacturing semiconductors and i think the leadership with pat gelsinger which started to focus on the technology is you know they are investing a lot of money in advancing their manufacturing capability you can see that again intel fell behind tsmc in the middle of last decade especially because tsmc was optimizing their notes for smaller chips that are especially going into the mobile space like smartphones intel kind of didn't look at the smartphone market at all this led to a situation where the consumer products moved more and more towards mobile uh, rather than stationary laptops and desktops and TSMC because they were tailored for the smaller chips in mobile started to gain technological leadership together with the one other important factor the use of the UV sorry EUV extreme ultraviolet so you can see that um, TSMC's first EUV node is uh, around 2018 time frame with the 7 nanometer and especially also in this space is when Intel started to have struggles. So Intel 10 nanometer, 14 nanometer had really big troubles. And by the time TSMC was, you know, climbing up to say five nanometer, TSMC um, four nanometer and now three nanometer, they gained an insane kind of leadership, which has essentially put the foundation for the company now being, yeah, the second largest uh, semiconductor company on the planet after Nvidia you could argue the most important together with ASML. But you can see here the market cap at 800 billion and Intel is at something like 80. Yeah, there we found Intel there, 80. So Intel is much smaller than TSMC, Nvidia, even AMD and ASML. But again, the best opportunities you can find when everything looks dark, right? So again, we, we saw the, they're facing the listing from Dow Jones. Okay, that's bad. We can see that Broadcom tested Intel's 20A and for the moment they feel it's not ready for volume production. That's also not good, right? But then I think there's other news coming that are really good together with the, obviously the Lunar Lake launch. Lunar Lake looks, I think that this ship will rock. I think this ship is better than Strix. It's amazing for small and thin laptops and I think they will sell a lot of these ships in Q3 and Q4 for back to school and for the holiday season. This is also the reason why for Q4, for example, I think that we will kind of be in the same ballpark as Q4 of last year, which was actually really strong. So the client computing, I think from now on, will start to climb back on to close to eight to nine billion, maybe 10 billion by Q, Q4 next year. Data center depends on the execution. We know that the first gener the sixth generation of Intel data centers. So here we can look at them um, do, do, do for 2024. Sierra Forest, based on Intel 3, also internal node, is really good. Crestmont e cores gets a lot of praise from most of the reviews I've seen. I wouldn't say they are at parity with AMD, 
but they are much closer to the leadership position than they were in 2022 and 2023 where AMD was just like multiple leagues ahead of Intel. But I think Sierra Forest for certain workloads looks great. The second generation of the Forest lineup, which is Clearwater Forest, will be on Intel 18A. You could argue that this Intel 18A process is very competitive with AMD's uh, Zen, uh, Zen 5 um, based on TSMC's 3 nanometer. So AMD won't have the advantage of you know better nodes anymore, I think. Uh, so that's one thing. So Intel is um, also regarding Intel 18A. I think they moved from, for example, they had some issues with 20A, but they focus now more on Intel 18A. They they get more people to work on 18A. We know that Intel 18A also is the first node that will incorporate gate all around and backside power delivery uh, innovation that's gonna help reduce power power draw and some other stuff technically that even tsmc and samsung will not be doing until i think two nanometer or even below that so intel will have some leadership in some areas of you know the the manufacturing node we can also see that lunar lake is gonna be with inbuilt memory although lunar lake to be honest is based on tsmc three nanometer 3NB I think together with also Arrow Lake so they're still outsourcing but you could argue also that those outsourcings to TSMC are based off you know they didn't sign the contract yesterday or two months ago I think they signed the contract with TSMC two or three years ago so they at that time three years ago they weren't sure in you know their 18A process so that's why they are outsourcing I think but I think if they would have known what they know now Maybe they wouldn't have outsourced as much. But anyway, so that's the case. 18A is going to be great. I do believe that. And I think the interesting part, if you follow, follow this gentleman here, uh, Silicon Memes on, on Twitter, I followed him for a long while. And one interesting point that they discussed Intel yesterday was they're mo moving from, you know, pre-EUV nodes. So the pre-EUV nodes are the nodes that were, for example, the intel 14a or in, in sorry, intel 14 nanometer or intel 10 and um, as they are moving to the intel 18a they'll have three three times increased pricing compared to cost so they will have essentially more margins much more margins so at more and more intel products go to 18a and onwards their margins will improve now these improvements i wouldn't expect in terms of financials until at the very best let's say q4 next year to show at least some 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 substantial improvement on margins and, and you know earnings per share and all this kind of stuff because if you look at here you can see that the gross margin has been going down especially if you look at for example on the non-gap basis they guided for example for you know 46 and now they are at next guidance uh, is at 38 percent whereas also on the gap basis they are down to 35 percent and they started you know in q3 of 2022 at 42.6 percent so the margins has been going down i do not expect a, a substantial reversal until let's say probably second half of 2026 even then maybe they won't make you know any substantial amount of money because this is a big company they're moving slow but they're doing the right things they're cutting the dividend they cut the stock buybacks they will cut uh, 15,000 people um, in the R&D. So a lot of costs will be saved. They are getting finance from the American state to the tune of billions of dollars. They're getting outside uh, finance from, you know, different partners. For example, they're building different factories, I think, different fabs at different stages where they share with private investment companies. Although, obviously, they will have to share on the on the you know income at some point so that's not the best case of scenarios but i think at this stage when everything is desperate i think this is a good move so yeah when you look at add it all together 18a what i'm he hearing from the market i mean this has to be the lie of the century if intel 18a fails now that, that's you know that's one risk but i think they are mentioning that a lot of intel products will be based on intel 18a we know for example that panther lake which is a consumer product. It's gonna be the successor to Luna Lake. It's gonna be based on 18A. We know that Clearwater Forest, the successor to the Sierra Forest server, which got really nice praise. And that one is based on Intel 3. 
So now it's gonna be, you know, the second generation will be non Intel 18A. It's gonna be much better again. I think possibly to the tune that they will be better than AMD as well. So there's no reason for me to think that Intel won't be, at least in terms of the financials point of view, for example, if you look at the different segments, I think client computing and data center, which are the most important design parts of the company, will do better than they have done over the past two years as we go into 2026 and onwards. I'm quite confident of that because not only is that Intel is, you know, getting more competitive with TSMC on manufacturing process and due to the single fact that they are getting more competitive with TSMC, anyone that uses TSMC won't have as big a lead in terms of node advantage that they had and who are using TSMC were most of Intel's competition. So AMD, for example, comes to mind, you know, the whole thing of AMD taking market share since 2016 until now is because of, you know, partly good design, but also good manufacturing, which comes from TSMC. So I think when you consider that part that AMD won't have necessarily a node advantage, but still, I'm very confident in AMD as well. But I think, you know, the worst is starting to end for Intel, I think. But again, I'm not saying that you should put your life investment in Intel at this stage. What you should do instead is to follow the company closely. Because I think if we start to see, you know, credible rumors and data that 18A is performing well, I don't see any reason whatsoever why this company won't be worth multiple times more than it is right now. Again, it's, they have a lot of depth of short, but they have some some still nice uh, deep key money to t touch on if they needed that. And I think, you know, 18 billion US dollar, they are trading so low and it's nothing for a company with the potential. Like if Intel executes on 18A and then continue, you know, the same process essentially that TSMC did a decade ago, look at the market cap of TSMC, 800 billion. Nvidia 2.6 billion and AMD 2.203 billion, uh, 230 billion thereabouts. So combined TSMC, Nvidia and AMD and a couple of other competitors to Intel are worth more than two, three or four trillion US dollar and Intel is at 80. You could argue that Intel does everything that all those companies do together. It's just they have been doing it much worse than the other companies currently. But if they you know, if they compete on that, on only manufacturing and the traditional, you know, CPUs for servers and personal computers and consumers, Intel will be worth, I believe, at the very least five, six hundred billion US dollar. And if you add to that, if they manage to also execute better on the data center AI GPU specifically, if Intel's Falcon shores that is going to be launching late next next year is that one if that one is you know taking somewhat a market share even like minuscule of two or three percent of a market share that is you know at the very least 150 200 billion that's four or five billion extra sales in their data center in the data center segment so i think if you add to that even let's say five billion of falcon shore sales for 2026 and onwards that's 1 billion on each uh, each quarter or more than that. So I think yeah, it's for Intel. Again, don't put your life money on, on Intel, but I think follow the company closely. I will definitely follow this company closely because I think a lot of people are missing the potential here. I fully understand why people were negative on Intel over the past eight years. I was one of them, if not the biggest Intel critic of, you know, of, of all time or anyone I know of. I was like, you know, not liking Intel as a company at all. I've been telling everyone I know, don't buy Intel stock over the past eight years. That's what I've been saying. But I think over the past eight years, it would be realistic to give advice to not look at the company in terms of stock price. But now I think, you know, it it's a risk of, you know, if you're if you've been negative on Intel for the past six or seven years, I'm now starting to say, OK, you know what? I'm holding my hands up. I've lost a lot of money on this company. I'm not going to invest on this. I respect your ideas and your point of view, but I think it's much higher risk that Intel actually becomes a good investment now than it did, you know, in 2018, 2020 or 2022. I think 
starting from now on, I think we are seeing some signs that points to the picture that this could be a, a turnaround of the likes of that we did, you know, for example, with AMD in 2016. If you look at AMD stock price, I think I bought my first shares at 2.2 or 2.6 US dollar. I don't know if it was late 2015 or 20, um, 2016 in the beginning. I don't remember exactly, but it has to be, you know, in this time frame where you started to see rumors of AMD. Uh, yeah, it has to be, I guess, late 2015 or early 2016, because at the time we knew that AMD had this one last shot at uh, Zen architecture. So Zen was supposed to be their, uh, their savior. And it's turned out to be everything they liked it to be. They were better than Intel in number of cores. On multi-threading, they just, you know, destroyed Intel in a way that we've never ever seen, I think. Like, in some multi-threading workloads, they would be like two or three times better than Intel, at sometimes at lower price. That, that laid the foundation for Zen 2, Zen 3, Zen 4, and so on, and the monster that AMD is now. So AMD's Ryzen CPU division saved the company, and today AMD is, you know, sure, they're playing second fiddle to NVIDIA on the GPU market, but as I mentioned in many videos before, AMD today is, you know, their MI300X and 350X is gonna take the game to NVIDIA. So I expect them to gain market share even there. So again, we've seen this happen before in 2016. This could be, you know, the other option of AMD, but now in 2024. So yeah, I will, if you like Intel, please. And if you're interested in this stock, please follow me and like the video, subscribe. And I will promise you that I will con continue to cover this company because I think the opportunities uh, here are potentially huge. So thank you for watching and see you in the next one.